Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a special, nice little one-off with your man Travis Snell. Oh, I've had I've had a not a rough, but a tough 24 hours. You know, just got back from the hospital. Daughter was born. Just let everyone know, Logan Jean Snell. That's the daughter's name. Uh, you know, if you know me, I'm a big X-Men fan, so I was happy the lady let me get those in there. It was back and forth between uh, Logan and Jean, but uh, we went that route. So. I was planning on having a nice little break until the chapter two review, you know, let the throat rest, let the mind rehab, box the night away. I don't know what I'm talking about, but Joker trailer dropped. Joker number two. And if you know me, I am a massive Joker fan. I've been talking about the Joker since the podcast started. I've been talking about this movie since it was even, I guess, kind of tenly announced or just kind of broke in the trades. As I'll say, as always, if this is your first time listening, uh, well, a few things. There's some cheap plugs out of the way. We did a we did coverage on D23, so go check that out. We talked about the movie panels. We did a TV panel one. Uh, we did a Marvel Phase Four ranking where we ranked all the TV and movies together and what we're most excited for. That was a really good cast. Thanks for that too. Lots of people turning out for that one, so that's fun. Uh, just dropped an Obi Wan one as far as maintaining a little mini episode of Cantina, kind of do's and don'ts of what we want from that show. We've been wanting that show for a long time, and it's finally going to be happening. It's confirmed. So lots of good content. Next week is the it Chapter Two review, along with the GV Classic episode that we'll have an explanation at the beginning, but it's not in our cycle anymore. The feed, so we're putting the it Chapter One review back up there, nice and free for all of you. So yeah, want to stay tuned to the channel because this fall we got lots of stuff popping off. But the thing I'm most excited for. The thing I've been excited for, like I said, for a few years now is this Joker movie. So, obviously, when it all came out, the news, that was all good as far as Joaquin Phoenix, Todd Phillips, a little like, eh, we don't know, Martin Scorsese producing, which is not really the case anymore, but it very much has that vibe and inspiration for. First trailer blew me away, and I had been saying for a while since this movie happened, there was, you know, D- Dylan did agree with me, but I'd say there was like... I felt like I only knew of, and even on the online community, like 10 people in the world that thought this Joker movie was a good idea. And for me, it was always just, it's something different, right? And just so you know, uh, I am alone today. So if you ever hear a break like this, it is a water break. So I don't get nice and dry. And, you know, I'm starting to sound like the Joker or like jo- uh, Jack Nicholson when he's like at the doctors in Batman 89. He's, he's like coughing up. Like he starts to laugh. I don't want to be like that. So... I just thought it was a good idea for the genre, and I've been ta- uh, I sorry for uh, old time fans. I've been harping about this forever, and it's also uh, along with Batman, my favorite character of all time. They're tied. It's you know just like how they're linked in the comics. They're just kind of linked in my heart. They're the yin and yang, and Joker, and that's what we're going to talk about. I'm going to break down the trailer. I'm going to do a little opening here, and I'm literally going to watch the trailer. So it's not a trailer reaction. It's days later, but it's kind of a breakdown of each scene because I have talking points, but I want to relate them exactly to the trailer scene. So I would say when I start doing that. Maybe the best would be to, if you don't want anything, like if you're a person that doesn't like many spoilers, just want to watch trailer once, I wouldn't tune into that because I think I have some stuff where it's like, yeah, they showed that in the first trailer. Now they're showing this. It probably means this happens. That doesn't bug me. I'm very excited to see what this story is. The first trailer blew me away. Like I said, I had always said that this could be something special for comic book movies, but it just keeps growing. I never, and I think Dylan posed this to this question to me the other day. It was like, do you think this could be an S tier comic book movie? And as we get closer and closer, I really do. But at first I never had that expectations. I just wanted it to be good. And people go, wow, you can make a solo Joker movie and it does something unique. It's a low budget. It's a character piece. Let's do this with more, whether Marvel takes over that approach or DC goes let's do this black label idea and let's do a 40 million batman movie let's do a superman red sun movie let's do let's do a bunch of stuff you know like let's just uh, you know as uh peter quill says in guardians 2 like i'm gonna make some weird shit start doing that and that's what the joker looks like it looks weird so i had the idea as far as i liked most of the talent involved so i like the idea like this could change comic book movies and then now as the first show that came out, it reminded me a lot of, you can go back, uh, me and Kyle did a breakdown. I'm sad he's not here because he's just as excited as, maybe not just, but he's just under me for excited for this movie. Um, we talked about that this looked very indie, very Oscar-y, and I talked about that, how it has a good chance. The trailers make it even more so. The only thing that holds me back is just Todd Phillips. He's not a bad director. Hangover is one of my favorite comedies. He did old school, but he's never dipped into this territory yet to be really serious and to show this new muscle that he could create a character driven drama you know he has great dramatic moments in some comedies and whatnot but this is a whole nother deal and i'm hoping what it is it's uh it's kind of like what adam mckay did with the big short he did anchorman he did stepbrothers i 
pretty sure he did. Uh, there's a bunch of things that he did that were all just strictly, you know, very over the top comedies with Will Ferrell. And then he did The Big Short. And I didn't even love The Big Short, but it did feel like, okay, he's doing something different. I loved Vice a lot more. That was one of my favorite movies that year. So that's where it's like, okay, he took a step into a different world and he could do that. So that's the only thing I've always was like, I think this could be a good movie, change the way people think about comic book movies. And then I always thought Walking's going to kill it. And if anything, even if the movie was kind of meh, he could definitely get a nomination the same way uh, Rami Malek won for Bohemian Rhapsody. And I think that's a very average movie that also won a lot of other Academy Awards too. But I just thought that that was the proof that, oh, you can still have just kind of an average movie but have a great performance in it and someone still won an Oscar. And I thought that could be this at the worst, but I still think it could change comic book movies. Is it going to be that S tier for me? That's very tough. And that we're going to maybe do a cast on that one day for after my nine. So that's why you head over to our Patreon. Um, and as I won't go into what the, the qualities in depth are, but for me, I think there's only, I think there's probably four S tier comic book movies. The fourth one's tough for me. Cause I do think one of them is the MCU, I don't know what that would be. Is that like an end game because it's just like a combo come to life? That's amazing. Would it be Avengers? Because I think that movie is just so slick. Would it be for some people probably a Winter Soldier? For me, a Black Panther because it's a more solo uh, adventure. It's dealing with real life issues in a really fantastic way, in my opinion. But then for me, it's also the MCU. I feel my three that I, I'm locked on are the Dark Knight, Logan, and Spider-Verse. And to me, those are all ones that transcend the genre or hit it perfectly or just build upon it and bring in a new fan group. Like I feel like the Dark Knight, Logan, Logan, not as much because I feel like we've kind of evolved now, but it just, it, you watch that and I always say that there is a difference between movies and films and lots of those are, and Spider-Verse is definitely very comic booky, but it's just all three of those you could watch by themselves. And I think Joker could be that. Uh, my only hope was like Todd Phillips. So first trailer, love that second trailer. I love this too. I know that was a lot of foreplay. What was that? That was seven minutes of foreplay. Man, any virgins out there probably hated this part. Uh, <laughs> but you got to build up to it, folks. You got to build up to it. Because you know what happens next? The good stuff. Trailer's great. It's every it's everything I want in this movie. And that's where it all comes down to. Because it's still this uh, debate of, I see kind of few ones going out there of, you know, Origin for the Joker, we don't need it. Some people go, we don't need another Joker movie. That's fine. You can go away because then just don't watch it. Oh, and then the other thing that I do think will come up, because lots of people are saying it's it's going to be divisive. It's going to be out there. You know, people are going to uh, debate about it a lot. Like, what's the movie? Kind of maybe like a Midsummer coming out or, or that came out. Or I thought there was something more recently that had a lot of debate. I can't, oh, Once Upon a Time Hollywood. That uh, had a lot of debate. So a lot of people that have read the script are saying that even though we've heard many reports of the script was being rewritten on the daily, so which you might worry and go, oh, that's not good. Iron Man is rewritten on the daily. If you don't like Iron Man, that's not good for you. But that happens a lot in Hollywood and a lot with these kind of bigger comic book movies, even though this is on the smaller scale. So I don't believe that much when people say I read the script. And we even talked about that with the episode nine footage. When I read the description, I thought, meh, I don't know about it. And then when I saw it, I was like, okay, I'm liking this a lot more. I can actually interact with it. So things change. We do the same thing here when we talk about podcasts or gauntlet or just ideas we want to execute. On paper, of course, I don't, I'm don't. i not saying people rend our line that's a piece of shit or that it could be divisive or it's not good. It could be. But I think this movie really comes down to tastes. And there's going to be a water break in this. But you got to think about while I'm drinking, what do you want in a comic book movie? You know? Because for me, I just want good movies. I want to be open to them. I want different movies. And that's the way this genre has to go. Because eventually the genre will hit that superhero fatigue. But I think it's far off because there's so much you can do. We have so much untapped potential in the comic book world that why should that happen? It could happen if you keep making the same movie over and over. But that's why with the MCU, Phase 4 looking very differently. Look at even DC Slate right now. Aquaman was different. Shazam was different. Wonder Woman 2, that's a sequel to a successful movie. Birds of Prey, a film team-up movie. And a successful character, great actress in Margot Robbie. This is something different. Like That's what you need to do. Even something like The Boys. You need to get other comic book stuff out there so it's not just the same old because i love the mcu but if everything's the mcu then people will even good ones will eventually turn against it like westerns go ah eh, i've seen this already and that's why i think they know we even need to be different so 
if you want this to be, and that's the thing, I love that Todd Phillips said, oh, it's not based off any comic book, blah, blah, And I think he's smart saying that. He's just trying to get ahead of everybody. And he doesn't want people to be pissy, like, oh, I didn't like, like, because there's rumors to be on. I'm going to talk about rumors, too. There's rumors that Joker might some way be connected to the Waynes. Maybe he's Bruce Wayne's brother. Maybe he's, um, oh, what was the other one I heard? Oh, maybe he's Bruce Wayne's uncle, things like that. So we've heard some rumors that maybe he's connected to the Wayne family. That might be some sort of twist that he was either like, a child and he's just been alone with his mother. And there could be some fans going, oh, that's not my, that's not my Joker, first of all. And that's what I mean. The Joker, to me, is a tough thing to say, that's not my Joker, because I think he's the most moldable character. If you look at a character from the start to 2019, now, when did he debut? In the 60s? I believe so. Maybe I will disrupt this cast just to take a look to see. But he has been around for quite a while. And that's the thing with the Joker. If you look at from when he started to now... He has always been different. Let's see. Here we go. Bill Finger. Yeah, shout out to Bill Finger. You know, Bob Kane. Always trying to take the credit. Uh, let's see here. No, I was wrong. Give him another 20 years. 40 years. I always forget that. Yeah, Batman came. Batman Superman. Superman was first than Batman in the 40s because he had that terrible costume. had that orange gun. We've come a long way, but many characters change. But Joker has been one where I feel like you go Superman, you go Batman. You can do different things, but you got to hit these exact points. Joker is this moldable character. You can do whatever you want with him. And that's why I think what this trailer is showing, and I'm, I think his comments, and he is trying to show that this is going to be different. This is going to be a movie that, like, kind of Oscar movies. And this is why I'm interested to see even how our fan base reacts to it. Because we have a lot of mix of Star Wars, Marvel, DC fans. But... We do have some people that like the Oscar movies. We do cover those movies, so I think that's why. But I wonder how those people, the same people that just watched maybe like the MCU and those bigger DC movies, how will they react to this? If they look at something like Oscar movies and go, eh, that's not really for me, I think you need to prepare for it. I've been trying to prepare people for a long time. This is not the movie you might think it is. I think the Joker's going to be doing crazy stuff, messed up stuff, but this could be a movie where there's 30 to 40 minutes of dialogue. There's 30 to 20 minutes of just walking Phoenix alone, looking sad, his facial expressions, like true acting going on here, not some bunch of CG, which I like, but I want, like I said, variation. And I think this trailer just doubles downs on that. Even though Todd Phillips says that, there's still... The two things that are, not even two things, the most important thing is that's why I was not a fan of Jared Leto's Joker. As long as you capture the essence of the Joker, that is from the comic books. It's the same way any story. When Mark Miller sat down to write Civil War, he didn't go, oh, this has never happened in the comics before, I can't do that. You have to evolve. Everything has happened like that. And then even then with What If Tales, like I said, Red, Super, uh, Red Sun, Superman, what if he landed in Russia? That was not an idea, and people love that. But what happens if before it came out and they just said, we're doing that? I'm sure some people are like, oh, that's not Superman's origins. And they've specifically said, this isn't tied to anything. It's its own separate movie till now until maybe we get a sequel one day, which I'm always all for because I like more Joker in my life, and Joaquin just looks like he's a beast and he's killing it. So I think this trailer just doubles down on it's not – that type of movie it's not a comic movie it's not even like the Heath Ledger Joker where he's doing that stuff because Heath Ledger Joker we got to see all the highlights you know there's many times where he's just sitting in front of a mirror painting you know I don't know if he's painting his tongue but that's the case of it is going to be more of an Oscar actor heavy writing character study movie and I'm all for that I want that especially with this character and I'm going to get into it and that's where the other pushback is you know him dealing with the mental health and do you want to either could you be belittling that or hurting that? Or could you be showcasing that? Of like, look at this psychopath and what he's doing. We're glorifying him. I think lots of those things. And even then, with a lot of people saying, I don't want to sympathize with the Joker. Sympathize with the Joker. I, in my opinion, it sounds bad. But I think those are all very short-sighted people. Because I said this on the last cast. I'll say it now. Is you can sympathize with someone until they take a certain turn and do something bad. You know, like I have like Taylor. I know him. He's a great guy. He's the nicest guy I know in the world. But guess what? If he just woke up tomorrow and just killed 30 people, I'd go, I don't know if I can sympathize with him. I'd want to know what happened and I'd feel really bad. But at the end of the day, Manny did this and this is terrible and that's a bad person. And maybe he wasn't a bad person his whole life. And that's the case. And that's even what this trailer, I'm going to get into the scene by scene where I want to bring up. There is, and I'll... I'll just say it now because I'm on a roll. There's a scene where he's talking with a psychiatrist and she goes, this is your last day here. We can't have you anymore. And he's like, you don't listen. I talk and I, you know, I talk about bad things and everything like that. And uh, I think she says, what do you think about that or something? I can't remember the setup line, but then he just goes, all I have is bad thoughts. Now, I would love to live in a perfect society where that person, and especially this movie taking place in the 80s where that stuff 
is mental health is still semi frowned upon. It's just becoming not an issue now. That doesn't. It has to not be an issue. But that I think the just past five years is finally starting to use stigma. Think about in the eighties. Think about how much stuff had stigmas between that and race and sexuality, your sexual orientation, things like that. So this guy's saying that. In today's world, he might not even get help, but back then, who knows, especially if this guy that's having lots of troubles, and let's say sometimes we could have that exact same person in a healthcare system that works out fantastic, and this is why I'm going to get deep into it, but I feel this trailer and this movie is going to be covering lots of deep themes, whether that's anti-heroism, someone truly dipping into a madman, mental health, uh, feeling a dejected from society and people around you it's touching that and that's why i know some people might not want to go oh the joker like look we're taking this guy who was a good guy but now he's a psychopath that happens and those are the same people that i'm not gonna get too political but i think those are the same people that (laughs) here we go this is a trash podcast this is what i'm gonna get very political about this is the same people that you know i don't care what you support right left whatever you do in america but i'm somebody that was left and michelle Obama had this quote about you know at some point, some Democrat or some Republicans were throwing some insults about her and her family. And she, the classic line is, when they go low, we go high. And it's just kind of this idea of they can talk about stuff like how we look, where my husband was born, all this stuff, all this garbage. But then they were going to talk about the important stuff. And in my world, and that's why I, I consider myself kind of independent nowadays of people I kind of trusted until Trump took over. Those same people that would retweet that stuff are the same people that like retweet fat jokes about Trump or talk about his color and his hair. And you can do that. You can have fun. But at the end of the day, it's going to come down to policy. And that's all that matters. So you know what to do in 2020. They're showing my hands. Sorry for people. But you know what? We can still have different sides of the party and have a conversation. But I think those are the same people that would go, oh, I don't want them to make it look like the Joker had a tough life and then became the Joker because uh, they were just glorifying a madman. We're just making it look like, look, if you have a tough life, you can go off to be something good or something bad like this. No, it's the same people that with Wolf of Wall Street have bugged me. It's glorifying that life. It's like, no, it's showing you, yeah, it can be pretty. You can get these malls, you get these cars, you get these monies and you live this life. But at the end of the day, that karma is going to come around. And if you're a piece of shit, it ends up on you and you end up doing jail time. Who knows what Jordan Belfort is doing now? But then they, he went to jail. He lost a lot of money. He's probably making it back now with stuff. But other than they, that is society. And it's for still us to be have the knowledge to go, it doesn't matter even if he's making money now. That guy's still a piece of shit. He did those things. He hit his wife. He took his kids while he was high on drugs. All these things. And you can try to redeem for that, things like that. But this is where the Joker is a guy that, won't be being redeemed he's a guy that is it's too far gone and it's a guy that when he says all i have is bad thoughts if that character if that person is real life and gets put in, put into a shitty healthcare system with someone that's not qualified or doesn't care and i have some knowledge on this because my dad was a psychiatric nurse so he's dealt with people that have problems all their lives it with some people mismanagement it, it's it's not fine but some people are more durable than others other people it's like anything. It's like the Joker says in Dark Knight. It's like gravity. All it takes is a simple push because whether that's nature, nurture, whatever happened in their life, it's got them to this point. And some people can break bigger than other people. And that's the thing. If you don't have the help, if you don't have the correct help, someone that might be just on the edge can become a monster. And that's what I think this is going to be. It's the same way with Joker. He has a girlfriend. Even some people like, oh, he's going to be in love she might die and that might push him over the edge. There's a chance he might kill her. And that's, I hope, the point where you go, man, Arthur's life was shit and he was treated like garbage. But guess what? He became garbage. He became shit. He became, like, it's up to us to either that person to become better or to try and get help to get better. And at the end of the day, sometimes you can't get the help. And that's where I think some people are closed mind because you have people that many times, yeah, sometimes it's due to race, sometimes it's due to sexual orientation. But at the end of the day, when people go and shoot up schools or clubs or whatnot, they're sick in the head. There is a chance that maybe at some point in their life, they could have been helped and maybe they didn't go get it because there's a stigma around it. Maybe they didn't get it because the person just didn't care enough and they weren't qualified. And we see that all the time because at the end of the day, yeah, I'm sure some of those people, maybe they're born and they may, I, I believe it's still nature and nurture that can get to that point. But you know what? Maybe there is the one out of 10 that are just born. They've been evil from pure day. Okay, fine. That can't happen. I can't dispute it. But at the end of the day, I imagine a lot of those people, a lot of people that have killed people, a lot of people that have been serial killers, there are something wrong with them, but then there also is, they've just had a shit life. There's many of those, you look at serial killers, they don't grow up with a good life, and that's why they lash out, they get these weird fixations, go watch Mindhunter. They don't have, you know, they usually don't have good lives. There's exceptions to every rule, of course, but 
lots of psychopaths, killers in our world, in our real life, can start as a good person. And all it takes is months, years, just a bunch of bad stuff that happens. I've never got to that point. But have you ever been to that point where a bunch of bad stuff has happened? You know, like think about, let's say one day you go to work, you miss your bus, like, oh, damn, you're walking to work, you trip, you fall in a puddle. So you're going to work at the shitty job you hate, and your clothes are dirty, and you're in a puddle, and then you're late. So you're running, you get a cold because it was dark, it was still dark in the morning, and it's like negative 20, and you're freezing, and you're running, and then you get back and you go, oh, I don't, I didn't work today. I came here for nothing. And then maybe you swear at your boss. Doesn't ever happen to me, but I'm just saying, let's say maybe you swear you do something, your boss gives you sabbatical or even fires you or just brings you in the office and said, oh, good thing you're here. Our company needs to make cutbacks and you got to go. And then you go home and then you stub your toe and you're just done with the day. And good thing for me, if I've had days like that, it takes a day or two. You just sleep, you eat some bad food, you get some ice cream, you play some video games and hopefully you're back to normal and you can help. You can help yourself. And those are minor things. Sometimes in life, if a bunch of bad stuff happens in a row, maybe you can do that. But maybe, and I have friends that do that, maybe you need help, whether that's friends or whether that's a doctor. And that's what I mean. Maybe there's people that I've talked to in the past that, oh, this person really helped me. What if they are a piece of shit? What if they gave you the wrong information? And that's what it kind of looks like with him. So I just think that people, just especially in today's culture, so, so many people, I can tell you about that, are just like, you know, and I get it. They're just offended by everything. Look at this Dave Chappelle special. They're, they're offended by any little thing, especially if it's in comedy. But I think that's where this movie will be divisive, where it's going to take that approach and a lot of people aren't going to want it and not going to want to have that conversation. And I think it's a conversation that's needed. And maybe there's a time where I watch this movie and I go, you know what? They really didn't do it. They just kind of glorified it or they didn't um, really hit it home. Because there's even a thing like, here's a mini review. I watched 13 Reasons Why. And they're doing this thing where there's a character that raped a lot of people, innocent girls, and now they're kind of doing, not a redemption season, but I like, look at what his life was before. And same thing as I said, there is a balance. There is a, oh, he did have a shit life, but now when he's done these things, I'm supposed to feel bad for, or not feel bad for him anymore and go against him. But then I think that show has relied too heavily on, no, we're making him too good a guy. Like, it's really just people are forgetting, like, ah, he's just was having a tough time, you know, like, there is a balance to it. And that's the same thing. I could watch this and they could really just drop the ball and make it that whether they're belittling mental health, whether they're not taking it as serious. And like I said, that balance of maybe it's just like the whole time he's doing these bad things and maybe he kills as he beats. It's a, you should still feel bad. And they really play that up. And you can play that up enough because if it's from his point of view, he's unreliable unreliable narrator sure but at the end of the day and that's where i think something like wolf of wall street did play up like look at his life at the end of who knows what happens after that movie but in that movie look at his life at the end he starts to lose everything his life just goes away his wife or his life goes away his wife leaves him he goes to prison like they show like look at this all the ducks in a row and that's what i i hope this does so let's watch the trailer uh, I don't think you might hear some audio or whatnot, but I'm going to watch it frame by frame. I'm not going to break down every single thing, but just the important things that I feel I want to talk about more. But if you don't want to stay down for the breakdown, I love the trailer. It's fantastic. Uh, it's everything I want. I love that we only got two uh, in a few days. We're getting reviews. So I think it will could be divisive, but I think this is approaching that S tier comic book movie. Like I said, I always thought it could change comic book movies. Kind of like, uh, you know, even I could consider The Avengers an S tier, but even if I didn't, I'd say The Avengers, one of the most important comic book movies of all time because it created the crossover genre. So it could be in that. It could be in that, like, you know, A plus category, but it's just looking phenomenal. And it just looks like what I like. Other than Spider Verse, as you can see, what I consider S tier are some dark dreary movies and even if I'm not talking S tier I just like that I like people struggling I like seeing heroes or like really really um what's the way fictional magical or nightmarish characters looked at with a microscope because at the end of the day to make a character good you have to kind of get in deep and that's what I like I've always said I'm a character over story guy I want both to be great but if I can dive in deep with a character and see what are they going through how are they feeling that's just like uh that's a ice cream sundae for me. So let's get this going. We got a nice ad here. What's our ad? Mitsubishi. Shout out to me as his ad plays and I have some water. I haven't driven, you know, don't get in trouble now. But, you know, the lady was going into labor. Hadn't driven in over two years. Got the hospital fine. I'm always paranoid. Driving, scared driving. Boom. Did that so easily. So I'm proud of myself. It was good. Baby got there. Very happy, healthy. 
I have eaten so much bad food. I literally was like, oh, September, no, uh, or like coming up, I'm like going to be no carbs. And September hasn't happened, but it's like my birthday was also the 27th. So like cakes, people are bringing cookies and muffins and I can't go work out. Oh, first world problems, right? So here we go. Nice, beautiful shot on Gotham City. Now, this is what, again, what, oh, this, this makes me love this trailer. And what loves this movie? This is a guy, <clears throat> excuse me. So we're on the bus in the first shot of the trailer where it's him and then it's the uh, little black family, the woman and then the kid. The kids turn to him and he's doing funny faces and the kid is enjoying it. He's laughing it. He's having a great time with him on the bus. I just want to get the shot. And then she just goes, leave him alone. You're creeping him. And then when they turn back to walking Phoenix, Arthur, the kid turns away and he's just like, he looks, he looks so nervous and so disheveled and he like puts his arm in his, or puts his arm in his head, his head, his arm to like hide him hide himself out of embarrassment and there's multiple things about that that i think have good layers one you can see that no matter what whether it's with his mother with this and like i said if you don't believe this works and fine good for you but i believe the way they're going to take arthur is at some points in his life he is a really gentle kind caring person and that's where i think it's going to hurt us when we see him fall this is a guy that, and who knows, maybe the movie displays it differently, and he's doing that when he goes home and then he has 10 kids in the basement. It's like, oh, Arthur's always been an uh, evil person, but, <laughs> excuse me, but the way I think they're portraying it is he's a normal guy who has some mental health pro- He's a, not a normal guy, but I mean like a normal lifestyle as far as he's trying to, he's got a nine to five job, he's taking care of some parents, maybe, uh, maybe he doesn't have too many friends. He's a normal guy as far as he's not a politician, he's not a celebrity, he's not a singer, he's to me, one of us, he's one of the people, and if you have one of those jobs, that's great, but if you are a celebrity, stuff like that, it's not a normal thing, it's, you're on magazines, you're taking pictures, no other job gets that sort of, you know, in the entertainment industry, so that's what I mean by normal guy, just want to clarify, uh, so, seems like he's a normal guy who has some problems, but what he is, and like the way I'm taking it, he's just, cheering this kid up this kid looks at him he's making some funny faces he's a comedian uh, or sorry arthur pronouns but arthur's a comedian he's a clown here comes some water because the throat is getting dry maybe it's because i talk so fast people always say i talk too fast and i don't know i just get excited it's tough so he is just uh yeah another first real problem he is just entertain this kid and then the mom just turns around and shuts him down and that's the thing where it's like even this nice little moment in a life where he looks like he might be not have as much money he might live a dingy life he's kind of scrounging by even this moment where he's just cheering this kid up he's told like no leave him alone and two things one to me that just shows a lot about arthur as a character and to me that scene just how walking plays it it just feels so depressing and sad. It's like this guy just was just like playing with their kid, you know? And it's like the same way nowadays I feel that we do that. And even I would do that, you know? Someone might do something and you go, ah, creep, you know? Like, oh, why are you doing that? It's the same way people would like accuse Mr. Rogers. Like, oh, he, something was wrong with him. He was too nice. But it's like, hopefully he was just doing that to educate kids and he loved kids. You know, it's the same way I feel that even when, when I was like, single because now i don't even care i feel like even there was a time where i'd hold a door open for a girl and then they'd look at you like why are you doing that you're gonna ask my number it's like no my dad just taught me to hold doors open for women all ages and sizes and races it's just just what i'm doing but it's just like nowadays because it's like everyone's always thinking someone's wanting something and hey i get it social media make like the worst headlines are out there. So we all think someone's bad. You know, we're always, we're not giving people the benefit of the doubt anymore. And at the same time, maybe we shouldn't because yeah, there's a lot of bad shit, but I think that's what's great about this. It echoes those moments because you would, that's just stereotype. You, there's so many stereotypes in the world and you see someone that might look like a little creepy, a little, you don't want them around, you write them off. You don't know their story. They could be the nicest, most kind giving person in the world. But if they look like that oh, you write him off so i really like that shot like that trailer so and then we got him kind of walking to i think they're calling it the arkham hospital him stretching out his clown shoes so in the first trailer there was that like that sound it's really disturbing when they went on his body it sounded like like a body being contorted but it's these clown shoes he's like stretching them lost a lot of weight and here's the thing we've heard talked about walking phoenix and part of me i'm not trying to be insensitive he had talked about that he had looked at there's some sort of disorder where it's just like laughing disorder where you can't control it and you physically will just burst out laughing it's kind of like a tourette's and he looked that up and oh excuse me he based his laugh on that and then we see that he's walking through who knows hospital maybe the comedy club and then he just laughs and then he he laughs very loud. It's very violent. I love the laugh. It just is very, it stands out. He laughs, and then right when he's done laughing, it goes back to his serious face. And the best thing about that is it shows that this is a character who might be depressed, might be having a really tough life, 
but he's always laughing, you know, and it might be a thing where it's just like, if you're having a bad day and people are happy around you, you're kind of like, yeah, fuck these people, you know, like, why are they so happy? It's the same way, like, I don't want to laugh. I got nothing to laugh about. My mom might be sick. I'm not making enough money. People on the bus are treating my like crap. I don't want to laugh. And then the thing is, if you might laugh, like even then, and maybe that's it. Maybe on that bus he laughed and the woman's like, this guy is a creep. And that's saying he might be a nice guy and this disorder, which we do a lot as a society. I think that's going away now. But for many times, you would look down on people as with a disorder. I, I haven't. But even when I was a child, it's just like you, you know, if someone when I was a child and you might not know exactly how a mentally challenged person is and if it's someone that might have Tourette's or they yell a lot, that might happen. And as a child, I'd be like, I'm going to stay away from that person, not because I think they're bad or anything. It's just like, it's a scary thing or I don't know how to handle that. It's off, right? It's something different. It's something I don't know. And it's something as a kid, I go, that's a little weird. What's happening? And I don't know if that person has, you know, uh, uh, an actual disorder or something wrong with them. I don't know, especially where I grew up, if that person's just high on drugs. So <laughs> that's the thing. But that is something I think that people might not want to admit. And maybe if I just admitted that now, people go, oh, you are a piece of shit trash. But I think we've almost all done that at some point in our life whether you and even like i said when you're young you stereotype or you just write someone or something off because it doesn't feel right and you don't know the situation but it's kind of that fight or flight and you go ah this is a little weird that's a little off and then you find that you might learn about it and get educated by go, okay that's why this is but that thing especially this is the time we live in now and luckily i grew up with good parents i grew up with good friends but in the 80s i'm not saying everyone in the 80s were crap but that wasn't a thing that's where you know when we talk about early pc culture I think that did help us. I think now we're at the, a point where a lot of people thought it helped and now we're going overboard and it's not helping. But with this, that wasn't a thing in the 80s, you know? So you're definitely going to get looked at weird and maybe picked upon and whatnot. So I just, I love that kind of back and forth. That this is a guy who maybe is having a really tough time in life. Very sad, but he's like laughing maybe all the time. And it's just like, I don't want to laugh. I really don't. So just little touches like that really are getting me hyped and getting me feel that this is not just uh, what I talked about earlier. They're using disorder as a joke or just to be a little, just like, look, the Joker, he has a disorder because he laughs, you know, and that's why he's a Joker. He laughs. He has a disorder. It does work like that. But to me, it looks like they're making it uh, mean something more than that, in my opinion. That's what it's going to be hyped for this movie. I cannot wait. It's less than two months. So we got that scene of, I'm not going to turn the volume all the way up. We got that scene of him talking to the therapist and whatnot, just about, you never listen. And she, he's talking about the bad things he tells him and stuff like that. We get uh, people beating him up and he just keeps talking about things are going bad. All I have is bad thoughts. Just great. I think that exemplifies two things of, yeah, someone dealing with mental health and what they might be going through. And if a, if the Joker said that in the comic books, you'd go, yeah, that's uh, what the character of the Joker is. I feel like that guy really does just have bad thoughts. And when I heard that line, I'm like, that's perfect because that is, that is, like I said, you can always change stuff about the Joker, but there's certain lines, whether it's Jack or in the comics, like Scott Snyder did recently or Alan Moore or Heath Ledger. And now with something like that, there's certain quotes where it's just like, yeah, that explains this character to a T. This character that really is like an amiibo shape is always changing, but that all I have is bad thoughts. That's the Joker right there. Uh, so this is where we'll get into maybe some spoilers for the movie. Uh, two things. So we're at the part where he's at the hospital. So this is your last chance if you don't want connecting or whatnot. In the first trailer, we saw him with his mother, ba- bathing his mother, dancing with his mother. In this trailer, we see her in the hospital. I had said in that trailer with Kyle, I think you agreed with me, like, he's losing his mother. Like, 100% first act, middle of second act. It's going to be the bad, like the one bad day thing. And that's the thing people, a lot of other people too, I hate. It's just... It's so simple as far as like, oh, one bad day. What a trope, you know? And it's just like, that's not what it is. It's a bunch of bad stuff that has happened to you in your life, maybe years, months, and it's all leading up and it all just bursts on and it's one bad day and all this stuff just culminates and it just turns you to something really terrible, you know? And that's where you see the two sides of coins in that joke, in that book, because you see Gordon fight it and he doesn't become that. But the point of that is that's probably happened to many people where just things happen and happen and happen. You get beat down and some people are stronger than others and that's great, but some aren't and they get broken and they turn into something they don't want to. And that's why for me, the one bad day, people be like, Oh, it's just, you had a perfect life. And then you had a really one bad day with maybe people dying, getting killed. Is that? It's like, no, I think you're really missing the point of that book and you're missing the point of that story. And that's what I love. I feel like that's what it's taking that approach and also him being a comedian. So I feel like Todd Phillips, he says it's not based on any comic books and maybe he just means like the whole story overall. But I don't think 
Sorry, I gotta wipe the wipe the head. It's hot again in Kelowna here. I'm so mad. Uh, it was going down, and then it got jumped right back up. Um, I think he's just making that point to, so people won't get too pissy. But it's definitely still taking a lot of inspiration from the some of the canon material. Canon. I'm talking about Star Wars. Just some of the comic book material. But his one mom's in the hospital. If there is some connection with his mom and the uh, the Thomas Wayne, that might play into it more. You know, she dies. He doesn't really get anything. She had a maybe a crappy life she was you know had to raise his child alone this guy maybe left her that was thomas wayne makes good motivation for him maybe go after thomas wayne who we see in this trailer which we'll talk about and then after in the scene you also see robert De Niro on the tv show uh on the tv uh being a late night talk show character i'm not sure what his name is in this but there's this great line where he's like oh i uh walking phoenix the joker says or as Arthur says, I told everyone I was going to be a comedian and everyone laughed. And here I am tonight and no one's laughing. And they switched to Robert De Niro. And the thing is, when he sees that, Robert De Niro's character says that. And before we get into that, he's playing a very Jerry Lewis character-like. And I might be doing some, some if I have time, I'm not promising it, some special episode kind of leading up to the Joker. Talking about some more inspiration, some more deep dives. And obviously, i got to talk about King of Comedy where... This is getting a lot of vibes as far as a comedian trying to make it. And he was trying to impress the Jerry Lewis character, and, or the, the actor, and the actor playing that character. And it's funny that he's kind of in that role. So it's like a weird meta swap of, you know, he was in Walking Phoenix's role in King of Comedy. And now he's in the kind of adult looking down at the comedic, you know, the younger comedic coming up so it's it's so meta and fun that that happened and i think robert de niro looks like he's having a lot of fun with that and anyway so he says that line of you know want to be comedian and whatnot and when he robert de niro's entering the or uh introduced in the clip you see even though his mother's in the hospital he looks up and he smiles right away and he's happy and then de niro just brings him right down by saying oh yeah you're right no one is laughing We've all had that. And that's why I like that. Again, I think that scares some people. They're making the character of the Joker relatable. We've all had that where you think something's going to go good and maybe someone cracks a joke at your experience and you feel like an idiot. Or maybe there's something in a, something you did something embarrassing and you hope no one saw it and then someone points out and you go, oh, like, that feels bad. Or maybe you go, hey, we've all been there where we've got turned down. You, you're getting bad, not bad vibes, but you're getting different vibes, let's say. You know, for all you women out there, there's a guy you're really vibing. You're like, oh, I think this guy, we could go on a date or something. You ask that and then he goes, no, like, I thought we were just friends and you get egg on your face, you know, and obviously hopefully it's not as bad as what De Niro just did there. But at the end of the day, this guy might be, Arthur might not be well and De Niro's just doing a comedy show, but he's going to take that really personally. And again, I think we've all been there where, you know, we get really excited and then something goes bad and you got egg on your face and you feel like an idiot. And for a character that is in a desperate place and desperation, feeling like an idiot is probably not the greatest thing for him. So yeah, so we got that going on there. And yeah, the second he sees this great shot of walking, just looking at the screen, just like, I'll show this guy. And I'm, I think at first he's probably thinking with jokes, but no, nah, it's going to take a turn. We saw the trains, more riots, lots of train shots, but then we get this shot of walking in this red suit. I don't, it's kind of, well, it's ready maroon, purplish, so maybe it's the suit that he wears as the Joker or Joker, but it's with no makeup and he's just looking maniacal. Every time I saw him in the first trailer and this trailer, even with the makeup, I go, that looks like the Joker. His mannerisms, his face, his smile. He just has it on point. And I know, again, I'm being greedy, but man, I'd love to see them like do the spinoff of this universe and get a Batman in there. That's not what this is for. I understand. But it's just like, especially because we had Jared Leto is not a fan. This Joker is just looking like everything I would want. Uh, we'll continue here. So we got lots of clips of um, Thomas Wayne walking through just Gotham and he's watching that on TV. Then there's that We Are All Clowns. So just some stuff going on there. You get some introduction to Sazzy Beats. Saw a lot of Sazzy Beats in this trailer. You can see your kisser so that you're really showing the the public audience, us. <coughs> oh, excuse me, that she's going to be his love interest. Like I said, something bad's going to happen there. I don't know what it's going to be, whether he kills her. Maybe she figures out it's him. And then like she's disgusted because even though she talks about, I think at one point about that like oh you know we're all held down like she's kind of making it sound like yeah um, i understand where you're coming th from like kind of like yeah against the man but maybe when she finds out he's doing this bad stuff and i think there's a i think the word is she has kids and maybe she goes hey you are a monster maybe he kills her or maybe something happens or maybe she dies or maybe a riot happens that he caused that kills her i don't know but something bad is happening to her and it's gonna affect arthur in a bad way we got him painting himself he paints his tongue 
So then I think when that happens, it's showing he's clearly lost and he's going down a rabbit hole he cannot contain. So he's painting his tongue. Get some cool shots of the Joker, just or Joker, as he's calling himself in this, just doing dancing down the hall, walking down. And then there's this great moment. There's some more stuff as he beats, but then he <clears throat> this is the two great things that are happening with this is he's on the street, he sees a picture of a clown with his mouth wide open, and then he's looking at it and he just like opens his mouth. And he looks all scary. That's what I like that you can see throughout this trailer. Even with the trailer, it's done so well. But I think with the movie, you're going to see that he is just slowly becoming the monster. And he's putting together the pieces of the Joker. And this is part of the trailer when he's talking about, like, I didn't think I exist, but I do. And that's the other thing where lots of people do that. Look at the people that do do shooting. Sometimes they do just because they want to be remembered. They want their name in the news. They want to have some sort of fucked up legacy. I think that character is going to have this complex as well, that many people aren't going to treat him with respect. They don't care about Arthur, but he is creating these, hopefully, you know, there's parts of me that worry this is all in his mind, like Arthur Fleck is somebody and the Joker is just like a figment of his imagination while the stuff's going on. So if that happens, you heard it here first, but I just, I just hope not. Just because people said it was divisive, like what could be divisive? And like, imagine if all the Joker stuff is just in his mind. I think I could still end up liking it, but it was going to, it would really be a sledgehammer to the balls and be like, oh, I don't know if I want to, wanted that i want you know what this movie is kind of showing off but it's all about execution right <clears throat> um so it's him talking about that he just wants to be known pretty much he wants to exist because people who knows what's going on with zazzy beats but on that they don't seem like they really care about arthur so this is a way that he is inspiring people he's taking this clown makeup he has these clown masks he's going to see people riding they're holding up and that's what we're doing these shots now they're holding up signs they're going against police for in his in his honor so you gotta think about a guy that's that lonely and sick and a little disturbed maybe and that's where maybe he wasn't disturbed maybe he was but they're liking that idea and he's gonna have to escalate that you know this is comic book movie world so uh, you know luckily he's not gonna get caught but lots of criminals in our world if a shooting happens to some crime of trying to make your legacy bigger uh try to put your thumbprint on the history of the world in a very negative way but they just want it done anyway most of the time they get caught and it doesn't go on. That's with the with the movie. I think he'll you know wiggle his way of not getting caught, and he's just gonna get it's gonna escalate and escalate and escalate until something really bad. <coughs> Water break here. Um, we got this shot of him and Thomas Wayne. And Thomas Wayne just says something like, "You're so f like, why he's laughing? This isn't funny." And then he punches him. So that's why I think uh, some of those rumors could be true. Clearly, he's gonna maybe he just like has some meeting with him because he is the mayor and it's just a point of uh, that's why i think the rumors he is the mayor and it's just a point of okay he's doing lots of crimes big stuff he wants to get up to him maybe he comes in contact with him or maybe it's yeah you screwed over my mother at some point in life and i'm kind of out to get you and i'm going to use my insane clown posse to get it hopefully you got that reference and then he punches him right in the face so thomas wayne not messing around in this trailer uh, there's a great shot of the Joker in the the studio, obviously, of what uh, Robert De Niro's is, and he's just smoking, he has all the makeup, he has that blue and orange lighting, and he just has this look of so much going on, with determination, anger, uh, sati satisfaction, satisf why can't I, satisfied? I think so, yeah, satisf his look of satisfied, he has a satisfied look on his face, Tell me what the word I'm missing here, but it's just everybody's already using that a lot, and it, it's fantastic. It just that's what I like with this trailer and the last one. They give you lines or shot that to me tells you a lot or almost everything you need to know about what the character. More rides in the train, it's him getting him away, so kind of you know showing that. And then this great line coming up here is when you introduce me, can you introduce or can you when I go out there, can you introduce me as Joker? And I like that you can see when he delivers that, you got to go back. That to me looks like, and maybe he's just this way with the makeup, but that to me looks like he is uber confident in who he is, which is a scary thing because Joker is going to be a criminal, but it seems like once he's made the swap, once he's become the Joker, the makeup, the persona, the attitude, he is comfortable in his own skin and he believes that this is his path and he, that the old Arthur, look at, like I said, that's why this trailer is so damn good. I saw someone, I think it was Mark Miller, tweeted out, this is better than most movies. The trailer literally starts with, he's having fun being an innocent person with this kid. Someone tells him to knock it off, and he gets scared, and he hides himself. And then in this, he's decked up to the nines in makeup, and he looks like what you could call silly. But he's just telling him, like, it's your show, but introduce me as Joker. And he has a confident stance. And like I said, that shot of him with a cigarette. He's looking confident. He's satisfied. He is ready to go. He's not taking anyone's shit, and that's where it's going to be scary. And... 
you know, you don't want that because obviously it'd be great if he was a hero. And it looks like that's what I think is going to happen. It is going to be kind of an anti-hero. He's going to start that way, but it's just going to progress. It's going to get worse and worse. And at the end of the day, he's going to have to be taken down. And But that's why I like that with that makeup, he's a whole different person. Arthur is not there anymore. He's commanding the scene. He's commanding the presence. He's commanding the people around him. And it's great. He's like an enigma. Uh, just some fun shots. Rob De Niro, uh, him at one point, he's just like curb stomping some garbage. You know what's going there? And then they end with the same trailer, the poster, him dancing in the bathroom with uh, some makeup. And then it's ascending the clowns music. And he's just dancing. That's my phone wallpaper right now, actually. It's just him in front of that curtains before he goes into the De Niro show. And that's it. If you think about that, then we only got these two trailers. And that's everything. Uh, yeah, I, I'm excited for this. I cannot wait. Uh, yeah, I'm happy that we only got true trailers. I like that that happens because we don't see too much. I think this is just the right amount of we've seen everything. Like I said, maybe the Joker is just uh, maybe it's just a vision in his head and something else going on. Maybe someone else is the Joker and he's vision. What if I was the Joker? But I think and I'm hoping a lot of people saying the device enough is just like kind of mental health stuff and uh, um, uh, the uh, maybe some going away from comics. And I know like that might sound bad, but I don't want any divisive as like oh the whole movie was a dream like. That's just lazy, you know. And you can enjoy that; that's great. But it's like, ah, that you, you don't want that cop out. Like, let's do something because we got potentially lightning in a bottle, and that's what I think it is. I think we definitely have, you know, an Oscar caliber movie coming up here. It's funny that everyone's talking about that now. I was never in some people talking about this movie's gonna win. I don't know that. I don't. I'm not gonna predict that. I don't even know if it could get nominated. But I did say like Joaquin, maybe some writing stuff like that. I said this could be an Oscar contender now. And now the second trailer, everyone's like, I'm bleeding hips for Travis, but you know what? Hashtag Travis told you. I was like, no, no, no. Like everyone's saying this now. Like where were you months ago? And I was like, this is, this is a contender. You know, I, I never want, and I still felt the same way. My only hole was the director, but I always felt it could be a contender. The same way Logan got fucking raw. We only got a screenplay nomination, which is great. But Jackman showed up Xavier. I hope, the way that The Dark Knight was almost the way for Logan for writing, but The Dark Knight was the precedence to open up the categories and get Black Panther in. I hope Logan is kind of the precedence for Joker to get it. And, oh, you could get a writing, but you could get a director nom for a comic book movie. You could get a best picture. I guess Black Panther already got that, but, I mean, another one uh, as far as this sort of uh, indie tier. You could get Walking Phoenix nominated and winning an Academy Award, which happened with Heath Ledger's Joker, but that's supporting. Lead acting, a lot different, so... It's it's building, right? It's showing what the genre can be, and that's why I'm pulling for the so hard. And it's not even, and it is, obviously I'm a little bit biased because I love the Joker, but if this was any character, I and they did this route where, even if they made some realistic fucking Aquaman movie and it was really in-depth about pollution of the sea, if they do that with any combo character and they took this approach of, like I said, Aquaman, you probably couldn't, but a 40, 50, I think the budget is 70 million, but still smaller tier, smaller scope, not world ending, great caliber, talent, actors. If you could do that, of course, I'm ecstatic that Joker is kind of one of the first ones to do that, even though I think Logan is that and Dark Knight is that, but obviously Dark Knight, bigger standard and Logan had the, you know, the legacy coming in. But I'm always pulling for comic book movies. So the fact that this Joker is a cherry on top, but I just want this movie to be great to, no matter what it is. So, yeah. So thank you very much for tuning in. I cannot wait. Joker is just around the corner. So tune in to all this stuff we have below. If you like what I did here or what we do in other casts, please leave us a written review on uh, Apple Podcasts. It really helps us. We're trying to get to 200. And like I was talking about earlier with microphones and Patreon, how that helps that helps us a lot too. If we can get to the next milestone, that'd be great. So thank you very much for tuning in. When you hear from me next, I promise you, it'll not be boring.